There's not really appreciable secretion in the esophagus. Um, there's mucus secretion from the glands that we talked about that go throughout. But the next interesting spot in the, is the stomach in terms of secretion. So the stomach has a powerful um, se secretory potential. Um, it can really produce a lot. Now, <clears throat> one of its primary products is mucus. And in the stomach, this is critical because the stomach makes acid. Our cells of our body die in acid. The stomach makes proteases, you know, uh, molecules that break down proteins. Our cells are made of proteins, so they would digest themselves. So the mucus coat of the stomach literally protects the stomach from digesting itself. All right? So these, this mucus production is very important and happens vigorously all throughout the stomach. Some of our medications that we use to treat things like pain work against this mucus coat. So for example, NSAIDs, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs like naproxen or ibuprofen, have a tendency to reduce mucus secretion in the stomach. So if you take those long term, it increases your risk for ulcers, right? Because you're removing one of the primary protections. So a little clinical relevance to that bit. So you have the mucus production. Then we have two specialized types of glands in the stomach, oxyntic or gastric glands and pyloric glands. We're gonna talk about each of those in turn. But the oxyntic glands produce acid and proteases. They're in the top half or top 80% to the proximal 80%. The pyloric glands, which are more distal in the stomach, they produce mucus and gastrin. Gastrin being one of the hormones in our table, right? That's a stomach stimulating hormone. It's produced in two places, the duodenum and the stomach. All right, so they're deep pits. At the, um, the, the neck, at the top part of the gland, that's, those are our mucus producers, right? A lot of goblet cells. Goblet cells are our primary mucin producers. Then as we go further down, the next layer of cells are the oxyntic cells. They look like this, okay? So they're sort of fancy in terms of cellular structure, right? They have a lot of mitochondria and then a lot of surface membrane expansion because this is where they're producing their product, right? And then the product is gonna come out of the small sort of pore at the top. So the oxyntic cells, um, uh, yeah, the parietal cells or oxyntic cells, they produce hydrochloric acid and intrinsic factor, all right? Hydrochloric acid you know about from your general chemistry days. Okay, we're going to talk about the chemical mechanism in a minute. The pH of the stomach can get very, very low. Three is typical, but it can get down to 0.8 if somebody hasn't had anything to eat for quite some time or, or um, is a bit dry. Okay, creating that degree of acidity is expensive, right? So 1,500 calories are used per liter of stomach acid to concentrate the acid in the stomach to this high extent. Remember, the, the bigger the concentration gradient, if we're pushing another molecule up a large gradient, we have to put a lot of energy into that. Okay, so when the stomach is actively producing acid, it's consuming a lot of ATP. Um, and uh, I'll show you that mechanism in a minute. Okay, the, the bottom cells, the peptic cells, their job, or chief cells, they're also called chief cells, they produce pepsinogen. Pepsinogen is um, broken down into pepsin, and then pepsin is a protease that breaks down protein. All right, so we're in the oxyntic glands. So that's these guys, right? Parietal cells. <clears throat> so uh, ultimately what we have here is our, here's the lumen, so this is gonna go out to the stomach. Here's the interstitial fluid and the, the capillaries are gonna be on this other side. All right, so let's start with the outcomes. Hydrochloric acid, right? We can see a lot of hydrogen ions and chloride um, is coming in passively. 
Now, where do the hydrogen ions come from? Well, they're going to pass through this hydrogen potassium ATPase. Okay? Potassium is going up its concentration gradient, right? Hydrogen ion is going up its concentration gradient. So this pump is spending uh, energy both directions. Yes. Um, <clears throat> so getting a lot of value from that. Okay. The hydrogen ion that's pumped out came from water. Water, you know, always diso you know can dissociate a little bit into hydrogen ions. Those hydrogen ions are pumped out. Now we also have the interaction of water CO2 that we're familiar with now to make bicarb. So the book presents it this way, where the water splits and then we add a CO2. I like to think of it in our traditional way. Water plus CO2 breaks down to bicarbonate and hydrogen ion, right? The hydrogen ion gets shuttled into the lumen. The bicarbonate gets shuttled into the blood, all right? So what that means is when we are producing stomach acid, we are delivering to the blood bicarbonate, right? We call that the bicarbonate tide, that as we're producing stomach acid, what comes out of the GI tract is actually quite basic. The pH is, is um, higher than it is in typical places. Okay, so we have our hydrogen ion going out, our bicarbonate going in, um, all because of the CO2 water interaction that we've seen a bunch of other times. Now, <clears throat> potassium is going to play a role here too, right? Potassium is going to, um, uh, this is our sodium potassium pump, the same one we've looked at a bunch of times, right? So it's doing its usual thing, pumping sodium out, potassium in. The potassium that comes in leaks out and then gets pumped back in, <laughs> right? Now, why pumping this potassium back in moves a positive, which makes it a little easier to add another hydrogen ion, which is also a positive, right? So it's like a positive-positive exchange. And then the last bit is um, that I want to point out. As the bicarbonate is absorbed, the anion on the stomach side is chloride, right? So um, uh, we get hydrogen chloride on the stomach side, bicarbonate um, and chloride uh, a reduction on the blood side, okay? So I think we covered all those things. Uh, last bit, acetylcholine from the parasympathetic nervous system stimulates these cells, okay? So it, 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 it increases the production of all of the products of these glands. Okay, so this is parietal cells, acid production, right? <clears throat> now, uh, pepsinogen is produced by the peptic cell, so further down. Pepsinogen by itself is inert, but it's cleaved, split into pepsin by acid, right? There's always, we just made acid. So there's plenty of acid in the stomach. Pepsinogen goes into the stomach, becomes pepsin. Pepsin also, pepsin itself, when it finds a molecule of pepsinogen, turns it into pepsin. Okay, so there's two activations, the acid itself and the pepsin. Why do we care? Pepsin's a pro potent protease. Um, it's probably one of our best proteases um, and is one of the reasons uh, <clears throat> why the stomach has acid in it in the first place. Pepsin is also a weird enzyme because it works at a very low pH. Right, you'll remember from biochem, most enzymes denature at a low pH. Pepsin is very robust. It actually works better at a pH of three than it does at a pH of seven. So that's pepsin and pepsinogen. Intrinsic factor, which comes from the oxyntic parietal glands, has a special role. Intrinsic factor binds to vitamin B12, and the combination of intrinsic factor and B12 are then absorbed together in the distal um, uh, ileum, in the terminal ileum, as we call it. So intrinsic factor is necessary for vitamin B12 absorption. Remember that vitamin B12 is a weird one because it only comes from animal products, 
right? So it's one you have to keep a lookout uh, for in folks who are vegan. Um, <coughs> uh, but it also means that if you, if your um, oxyntic cells aren't functioning or are absent, in other words, you had a stomach resection, right? You don't have the source of intrinsic factor, you will end up with a vitamin B12 deficiency because of this system. Um, this relationship is called pernicious anemia, where a reduction in intrinsic factor from the stomach leads to poor absorption of B12, B12 deficiency, and then um, a megaloblastic anemia. So it's a fairly common one. Okay, so the, uh, those are the oxyntic glands. The pyloric glands, do I have a picture of pyloric glands? I don't. The pyloric glands are very similar. They look the same as the oxyntic glands, but they have different cellular makeup. They don't have many peptic cells, and they have almost no parietal cells. So the pyloric glands produce a small amount of pepsinogen and then uh, produce that thin protective mucus. Most importantly, these pyloric glands produce gastrin. Okay, so the oxyntic glands are the, are the major players here in production. The pyloric glands look exactly the same, but they don't produce acid. Instead, they primarily produce a hormone, gastrin, which then stimulates the stomach to produce more uh, materials. Okay, so three toxic topics, pepsinogen, intrinsic factor, and then the pyloric glands, which look just